All right, so I installed the Reliance Controls uh, generator transfer switch. Uh, has six circuits. Uh, it took me about half, I'd almost call it a full day to install. Uh, it's a Sunday, it's about 7 p.m. right now, I think. And I uh, just wanted to kind of go through the operation of it, how I've installed it. Uh, this is it here. And there's a conduit that runs up behind the wall and you can see the hole there. That was to uh, get it through the top plate between the basement and the outer wall. And uh, there's a little tiny gap there and I actually had to drill through um, a little bit of the wood to get the conduit to fit. I used a flexible blue PVC conduit. I can't remember the name of it right now, but you can get it at Lowe's. And uh, I used half inch on this job. Um, the instructions say to use three quarter, but you really don't have to. And I find that the, uh, the half inch conduit ends actually fit really well in both the outside uh, relay um, inlet and the, uh, the back of this, this actual um, transfer switch here. So, just focus. Um, the way this works is you have several circuits here. So you wire these up to your uh, power box. Um, using wires that come out down here. You can see it going into the wall. It actually runs into this power box underneath. I'm not going to take it off the wall right now, but it's in there and wired up to all the different breakers that needs to be in. It acts as kind of a man in the middle. So um, what happens is when you flip these switches between offline and gen, as you can see right here, um, uh, basically what happens is line is the actual power from the street. Off is completely disconnected and generators for the generator side. Um, and what you do is when the power goes out, you come down here and uh, you look at the top and you figure out what you want to turn on. I don't know if you can read it, but I've written out everything that I've wired up in this thing. And then you come in here. Let's do, uh, this is the sump pump, so I'm going to turn it off. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's squealing right now because it's off. And uh, I'm going to put that on generator. Generator's not running right now, but normally what would happen now is that it would take over and stop squealing. And you'd actually be able to see if there was any current load on this ABC line because that was switch A. If I did the same thing with switch D, I'd be looking at this dial to see if there's any activity on that dial. A um, little bit of testing I did today it didn't seem like um, this was enough current draw to actually move those dials, so I haven't actually seen them move yet, but um, I'd probably see them move if the sump pump actually turned on. Another one I have is the refrigerator. That's on D, um, and that would definitely move uh, this dial if it was on the generator load. Um, so, basically, uh, it runs into the power box and it's wired up to various breakers in there. This is, I'll just show you what the inside of my power box looks like. Just for fun. So, there's the inside of the power box. And like some of these breakers in here, I think this 20 amp breaker right there is the refrigerator. So that one's actually running through there. And then uh, back into the box to go out to, to, go out to the, uh, the actual refrigerator itself. So. But not much to see in there without the whole panel off. Um, so that's basically it. Um, if you uh, if you want to do this job yourself, it's it's quite a task. You really need to be careful with uh, circuits and live electricity and grounding. Uh, I'd recommend turning your power mains off um, in order to install this whole thing, which means they'll be off for quite a while. So you have to plan for that. I'm going to split this back on. So that's back to the line electricity from the street. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the outside box uh, mounts up pretty easily. Uh, the hardest part was actually running the conduit and the Romex through the conduit. Both of those were pretty painful, but once I got them, I just uh, stripped off the wires, made good solid connections everywhere, used electrical tape when uh, I used wire nuts. Um, you should always electrical tape your wire nuts after you put them on. And uh, that's pretty much it. I didn't end up using this uh, last one, this F, so uh, that's open.
I'm just leaving it in the off position to indicate that. And it's not labeled on the top. Uh, this actually includes its own circuit breakers, which is nice. So if you have 15 amp breakers here and 20 amp breakers here, these two can be tied together to be a 240 circuit, but I don't need one in my house. And then we got two more 15s. Uh, and theoretically, these 15 amp breakers can be used for 15 or 20 amp loads. Um, obviously, if you're going over 15 amps on the load, then uh, it's not going to work very well for you. But um, that's pretty much it. And uh, I've done a really horrible job taping up my drywall uh, stuff today, so that's, uh, that's that, but no worries.